Okay, welcome everyone. We're so excited that you're here for our Future Ready Schools webinar. And this is one that we're doing in partnership with the Achievery. So we're very excited to share how to enhance your back to school lessons with the Achievery. My name is Shannon McClintock Miller, and I am the district teacher librarian at Van Meter Community School in Van Meter, Iowa. And I also serve as the Future Ready Librarian Leader. You can find me on social, on Twitter, well, X or whatever it's called now, mm -hmm. and Instagram at Shannon M. Miller, and I blog at The Library Voice. And my name is Abby Tegland. I am a fourth grade teacher here at Van Meter Elementary. I also serve in two other roles. I am our ESOL teacher, K-12, and um, a part-time instructional lead, pre-K through fifth grade. You're busy here at school, Miss Abby. <laughs> So what we wanted to just share as we get started, Abby and I have been back to school. This is our second week at school. And I'm sure that as you are either getting ready or maybe you've already headed back to school, we know that we're all looking for digital tools and resources that support the curriculum and enhance teaching and learning in engaging, meaningful and fun ways. And we look for digital tools and resources that captivate our students' attention and foster a love for learning. One thing that last year, probably one of my favorite resources that I have brought to Van Meter was the Achievery. And it was so fun to find this because not only is it great for all ages, I work in a school we both do where we're all under one roof from preschool to our 12th graders. And so this one not only is great for all ages, but also all subjects that we're going to use too. And so I was really excited to have found that. But one thing too that I always like to do when I'm sharing how we use these things is, you know, when you find something new and, and in my role as a librarian at Van Meter, when I find something new, I want to share it with our teachers and I want to make sure that they're using it with our kids. And this is one not only totally free, but one too that they've done a great job of putting everything together. And when we think about what we do, not only as future ready librarians and educators and our students, when we're supporting that curriculum instruction and assessment part of our future ready framework, finding something like this has been just a really great thing to be able to use with all of our teachers. So the Achievery, when, if you have never seen this before, when you go to the Achievery, you'll see that this is a site for all K-12 educators. And it doesn't matter if you're teaching in person, if you are teaching remotely, it is something that is good for everyone to just engage your students and maximize the learning outcomes. This site was created by AT&T in collaboration with Warner Brothers Discovery. And I love it because it connects the kids through digital learning, through stories that really spark curiosity and learning content that entertains as well as teaches. When I saw that it had a partnership, not only with Warner Brothers, but with Cartoon Network and Girls Who Code and Code.org, I knew that it was going to be something that our kids and our teachers really liked. Another thing that is nice about the Achievery is you can find content in whatever you're teaching, whatever subject. Me, for a librarian, I love it because as I'm collaborating with my teachers, I can find things that maybe I can recommend to them. Um, you and your role, too, as an instructional coach, I'm sure that you like that, too, not only from your classroom, but also working with teachers. And one other area that I love is the digital literacy. I think this is just so important for all of us and that computer science, how we can tie in that technology and engineering as well. But this is how, and we're going to show you kind of a live view, but this is how you would search. And it's great because you can search by standards, by subject. 
You can search even like the media type that you might be looking for. Lots of different ways that you can really dig into the things that you might be looking for. And as I brought it to Van Meter, it was fun to see how Abby was using it. And I remember walking into Abby's classroom and instantly she said, you know, how drawn to like video that kids are. And so that was something that really stood out to me that it was going to be, um, you know, just a great thing to use because of what Abby said. We know that our kids like that media. We know that they're connecting to characters that they like or shows or content that maybe they've seen before. And so I'm excited to have Abby tell, you know, firsthand how she used it. We should go back to this little pictures so you can share that. And then she's going to share some things with us about how she uses it in back to school and through the year. Absolutely. Thank you, Shannon. Um, Well, one of the areas that I think this really gets the biggest bang for its buck is in this picture here that you're seeing. The video that these fourth graders are watching is directly from um, the movie Smallfoot. And It has just such an engaging component to it with them um, knowing that a lot of those students, like she said, are connecting to characters that they've seen or or viewed previously. Um, So this lesson was actually all about collaboration and communication. And the characters, the video clips from the Smallfoot movie, um, that kind of set up that environment for the kids. And then there's some collaboration that's done afterwards. And these guys were glued to the screen. Um, I can sing and dance and, and stand on my head as much as I want. Um, but they are absolutely captivated by uh, the media that each lesson provides for them. So that's just one of the ways that I've utilized it in my classroom. And I'll be sharing a few more here in just a moment. So when I think about um, myself as a teacher in the classroom, there's a couple of things that really stand out that I'm looking for to really just engage my students and get them excited to be in my classroom but also making sure that I'm meeting them with where they want to be met. And a lot of that is now in our digital world. So I'm going to share kind of my top four in the next few slides. So the first thing that um, I am looking for when I am using something like the Achievery is does it align with our curriculum standards? Um, And you are going to see today that you can search by standard as well. And so that's usually kind of my my number one. Does it connect with my curriculum? Does it meet the standard that I'm teaching? Um, And then I'll go from there to look for some other things. So the next thing, number two, what I'm looking for is, is it going to be highly engaging? Are my students going to be interacting or is it going to be kind of boring and sit and get? Well, the Achievery is very interactive. It gives a lot of opportunity for students to work um, collaboratively in groups, or they can do things independently too. Um, But it's going to incorporate great games, amazing videos, and some hands-on learning that they can do that's more dynamic than maybe other resources that you've encountered. The third thing I'm looking for is, is their ability to differentiate? Um, We all know that all of our learners have strengths. um, And so I'm looking for something that I can utilize in my classroom that's going to reach a lot of different students all at once. And this resource has the ability to do that. It has extra support and different levels um, that you can use with also some challenges and extensions to really push those students who are ready for that next step. And then the final thing that I'm looking for, especially nowadays with our students, um, is does it have any multimedia elements? And images, videos, audio clips, infographics, that is their world. These students, they want information and they want it quick and they want it to be visually stimulating. And so the Achievery has all of that within the components of the lesson plans that you will be provided with. So I'll have Shannon go back to that screen that you saw earlier 
One of the things that I want to mention um, about when you're searching for content to use is do not be afraid to go to different grade levels outside of what area you're looking for. For instance, I teach fourth grade, but I have utilized things that are in the K-2 um, grade level search zone. And I've utilized even things up through fifth and sixth grade, um, obviously viewing that content, making sure it's relevant for whatever it is you're trying to um, instruct on. But then also the beauty is you can search by um, topic standard, as you see there, that's kind of my number one go-to, and then the different media types that will deliver and be used in that lesson plan. That's so handy. I love that. Thanks, Abby. You bet. So now what we thought would be fun, and we're going to kind of do this together, is show you around the Achievery. If you have never been here before, um, we thought we would give you a little tour of how you find things. And so once you're logged in, this is what it will look like. And I am logged in already. We're going to give you guys a link to log in in a few minutes. But this is the view that you have. This is actually um, pretty new, this little view that I love how you can look at like new learning videos that are available really easy. But on that first page, when you scroll down, you can see how you can search, look for things that are new, um, explore new lesson plans, and then thing, see things that they have just added. Another thing that I think is really nice is to see who their collaborators are. And we were talking about this before the webinar and like, I love the code.org, Girls Who Code, um, Boodle, which is a great math site. And Abby was saying your new favorites are NASA. I love the NASA stuff. If if you teach um, science, there's some information and lessons that NASA has just put out that are really high engagement levels and the students are enamored with. So yeah, definitely NASA. I would be, that would be one that I recommend. Well, and it's neat because even as you see those different collaborators, if you click on those icons on the front screen, sometimes I like to just even look at the new things that those collaborators have added. Um, because like, again, in my role as a librarian, it's nice to get that overview. And as a teacher, I'm glad that Abby shared like how she uses this to really search for what she is looking for. And so at the top, when I click on this home button, it will take me back to home on the Achievery, but you can search either the units and see all of the units that they have, which is a lot now. This is also where you would find that search menu. The categories at the top is nice because you can get this little drop down menu and you can go to like coding, for example, and see all of those lessons that are there. And then um, over here, the little search button. And this is something that is nice too. Like even as I was preparing for this, like thinking about, you know, the different things that maybe a topic that you're looking for really quick, that would be the way to do it. But I'm going to go back to home and I'm going to actually have Abby just walk us through something that she'd search for. And then maybe you can show them your lessons even that you have. You bet. So a couple of things, like I mentioned before, my go, -to, my number one go-to usually is just, is it going to be our common core standards? If I'm searching for something that's maybe um, a science concept or a science curriculum, I might go to the NGSS, um, but I'll usually keep it on the core standards. And the nice thing about that is I'll show you if I click on fourth grade and I always try to go one above and one below. Um, just to kind of generate some more things that might be possible um, lessons to utilize. But then I'm going to think about, is there a topic that I'm looking for? Is there a media type that I'm looking for? And I'm going to just do kind of an open search here, and I'm going to apply that. And if I scroll down, I'm going to see different units. So this one's going to give me a whole variety, mostly geared toward the, the grade level span that I searched for. Um, so this is kind of fun just to kind of get an overall, this is like a buffet, <laughs> an overall 
um, thing that I can just, if I'm just kind of on the hunt for something. But one of the things that I like to do to really narrow my search is if I go up to the topic, let's say I'm looking for something that is more technology and engineering. And then if I apply that, it'll narrow my focus a little more. And so a couple of these that you're going to see like this one, how do we know um, where far away is or Mars? These are some of the newer NASA ones that I was mentioning that are super great. Um, and then, like I said, you can just scroll through and see the different options available. And so right now I'm actually going to um, show you this animated character. This is one that I think this one's actually geared third through eighth grade. And I have this one in front of me, but what is so cool about this is this is an opportunity for students to collaborate and create a character. And when you click on this, this handy dandy drop down is going to download your lesson plan. Very, very simple. It's going to also incorporate other standards that this uh, lesson plan will touch upon. So you can see some literacy standards here. It will also tell you about a time frame, so 30 minutes. And then our kids with this digital age can do all sorts of things that we probably as educators are learning right alongside with them. And so they can create characters. They can get the characters to move. They can get the characters to talk and do all these things. Um, and one of the things that they can do with this when they're collaborating is also learn how things don't always work the way that we want them to. So they develop that sense of algorithm and needing to be very explicit in their directions. And so with communication and technology skills, they then create successful uh, characters, including choosing backdrops. And, you know, they, they just, the sky's the limit. They just can do so much through this one little lesson. This one actually uses Scratch as its basis. So if they're familiar with Scratch, you can see that here in the, on the slide. They card. love Scratch. They do love Scratch. Yeah. Um, I wonder, Shannon, is it okay if we do, I, can you undo that? And then I just show one more. Yeah. This one, I want to show you not because I love being just, on camera. And we're actually on the camera. So go ahead okay, and perfect. we can just hold it up. So I'm going to show you one. You um, this is a code.org. And this is what the printout will look like when you get your lesson plan. You can download it. And the thing that's interesting about this is most of us as teachers are familiar with tangrams. And in past experiences, I've given kids tangrams, which this will give you the cutouts and you can use them if you don't have actual tangrams in your classroom. But the interesting thing about this lesson plan is it's going to ask the students to design, is that upside down? No, no. Okay. That's right. It's going to ask you to design a different shape based off of the shape card that's already created for you. So really what the students are having to do is they're having to think backwards to give information to their partner or their small group in order to create what the cards look like without actually visually seeing them. So talk about enhancing communication. And if there's one thing I know that our students might need more than ever these days, it's the ability to communicate because we're just so much that we do, you know, on our phones or it's all, you know, independent and not with in collaboration with people and actually having to, to communicate. Um, so they will find a success when they realize that they have to be so explicit in giving their partner or their group the information in order for that group to then build what the shape card already is designed as. Um, so again, it's just that higher order thinking, very interactive. There's always a video clip that really kind of gets them ready for what the what the skills and what the designs need to look like and be like. Um, and it's just, like I said, something that I think is a different way of reaching our learners, knowing that this is their world. I love it. That's a really great one. Those are new ones that you've done this year. I can't wait to see what you use, you know, next. next. I know. And the kids love it too. 
And so one thing that we wanted to make sure that we give everybody enough time to today is to have time to sign up. And this is the link that you can go to to sign up. And just remember that the Achievery is free for everyone. And so this is a great one. Like I said, you know, how I shared it with our teachers at Van Meter. You can go back, you know, tonight or tomorrow and share this with your whole district. And it's something for everyone. And so we'll give you a few minutes to sign up. I know that Leah is also watching in the chat. And one thing that we're going to do is to have everyone, once you sign up, you know, just like Abby kind of shared, you know, look around and see what is there. Abby and I will do the same thing in a minute as, as everybody gets this link and gets signed up too. And please pop in the chat. The nice thing about being a small group is we can just talk about anything if you have problems or questions and we can answer them as well. Leah probably put it in the chat too. But one thing that I always love, like at, when I first sign up for something is just, you know, having time to explore it and finding a lesson that you could use. And so in the chat, if you would like to share what you have found and how you're going to use a video or a lesson that you find, please feel free to do that. And we'll watch the chat here too. I love Leah just put the little lessons um, from Boodle and love that so much fun. Like that one. Have you used that? Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. The kids yeah. love it too. It's so fun. And they have like an ELA like component now too, right? They do. And I actually, um, there was like a sign up if you wanted a free trial and that I would highly recommend yeah. too. And so yeah, you can get a free trial and yeah, try it out. That's a good one. I love that one. Is is the um, link that Leah put on there about the Achievery.com content and Google, is that the one where we're signing up or do we actually sign up through Achievery itself? Um, sign up through the Achievery. So here, I'll put it back up here. And maybe Leah, if you could put this one in the chat too. I actually cannot, I don't think I can write on it um, because I'm in the Canva thing, but Leah, if you can pop it in there, that would be awesome. But yeah, sign up at futureready.link forward slash achievery. Thank you. Kim, what do you teach? I am the um, library media specialist at an elementary school, grades three through five. Awesome. Well, That's this is Virginia. Oh, good. That's it's perfect then to share. Yes, I can't wait. And I've been hearing you on other sites mention about the Boodle. So how it's do you know? really cool. We yeah. did a webinar last, like it was kind of in the winter, um, like maybe November. Um, and we had them on and they were so interesting and fun. Like I just loved meeting them and all the things that they're doing. So really cool story, super young couple. And they started it like in college, I think, but really need to see um, how much the kids love that. Yeah. I love that one. I have to put a plug in for that too, because last year Shannon brought it to us as a fourth grade team and our students begged us for time. We used it primarily for math. Um, like she mentioned, there is an ELA, but they would beg at the end of math lessons to be able to have some time on that site because it's it's pretty high engagement and, and they really enjoy it. It's very colorful and fun. But I, as as teaching a, a math lesson, felt like I could match what they were working on to what we were trying to accomplish in the classroom, too. So it's a definite way to double dip and get them extra practice that they're wanting to do and, and, and their motivation is high. The little characters are so cute. They are cute. I love it. <laughs> I have a question for you. So with all of the new reporting that's trickling in through Iowa in terms of the videos, how are you handling letting parents know what they're watching then if it's through this site? Well, one of the things that we do, well, and this, you're right, this is, we're all entering this new wave of being very transparent. So one of the things that we're doing as a fourth grade team is um, giving parents uh, links, if we can provide links, 
or um, images of what the students are doing. So our newsletters are more image based. So they might see a screenshot um, if it was a video clip from a video or if it was a, like a trade book that maybe was read to them um, and just trying to get out ahead of it and, and offering that as a form of communication um, just so that they know. I think it's it's more about creating that transparency and saying, and if they have more questions or if they want to mm -hmm. see more about it, they are more than welcome. Um, but at least if they know that's what we're using and we're, and we're up and out in front of that, I think that's, I guess, how we're attacking it. Another thing that's nice about the Achiever is parents can also, families can sign up for it too for free. And so if there's something like that they want to have a conversation or maybe learn more about like with their student, they're curious, it's free for all families as well. Mm -hmm. So that would be a great thing. Yeah. For you guys to even share, share that, yeah, you know, absolutely. with, with our families too. We had something actually last year, like I had little things out at the spring book fair, um, because that's when we kind of started using it or a little mm -hmm. later and they were, I had a little like poster and we had some families sign up for it. So yeah. it's nice. Cause then you can use it for like extended learning at home too. Mm -hmm. So is anybody finding like some cool ideas? If you are just like pop them in there and we would love to see her. If you have more questions, we would be happy to answer those too. I also wanted to share um, some little calendars and we make these every month. And this is something that we share. Leah shares from Future Ready and we share um, also on my blog each month, but just ideas for teachers. And so we have, for example, like dot day coming up September 15th. And so you could do something where they paint with watercolor. Um, it's video game day on the 12th. And there's a great lesson that you could use, but we do these each month and you can find them just linked in these slides and feel free to use them and share them with your teachers. A great resource to get people, I think, thinking. Sometimes there's so much that we have to think about. So if we can tie them into special days, that's always a great thing too. Another thing that we wanted to share is we have a special new ambassador program. And at this link, you'll find out more about the innovator program. But it's neat because this one is around the achievery to be an achievery ambassador. Um, great way to not only get more people like in your school signed up, but also if you are interested in getting involved in the achievery and spreading the word and future ready, you can find out more information there. And we would be happy to have you um, as part of it too. And then just to um, kind of like wrap up what we're sharing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to continue to ask us or put it in the chat. But we always like to share a few future ready resources. The first one are our podcasts. And I do lean from the library. We're actually recording season seven right now. I just had the coolest one um, with actually a librarian and he is like an expert in science. And he even told me the story about making a life-size whale out of these plastic bags that fit into their gym. <laughs> I was like, what? And so really cool, cool guests. And then my good friends have um, Tom and Adam and Carl also have podcasts that you can check out at the link above. If you're looking for more information too on the leadership strands, you can find them at this link. And then we're very excited to announce that we're having three future ready leadership forums. These are in partnership with our amazing friends at Capstone and ISTE and also um, with UPenn. And we're having them in California coming up in September and Washington in October and then in um, Vermont in November. And you can register at that link and find out more. And these have been so great. I think we've had three so far and they've been just amazing. My friends, Bill Bass and Adam File and myself and Tom Murray has come to 
we partner together with just great educators and even students at these. And so um, if you're interested, please feel free to find out more and register there. And as always, just stay connected. These are places it seems it feels really weird to see that little X, but we're on Twitter or X at Future Ready and Instagram at Future Ready Schools. And then you can find us on Facebook as well. But thank you guys so much for coming. And we were so excited to share the achievery. And I loved having you on Abby because she always has really great ideas, amazing teacher, but it's always really fun to hear how an educator is using um, the tools. So thank you so much. But again, if you need the link um, to share with your teachers, if you need it to sign up, please grab it there. And you can find us also at that link with Future Ready School. So thank you for coming and reach out. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. And um, yeah, get connected on the Achievery. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you. excited for teachers to be using it. Um, your kids will definitely ask for it afterwards. They will be engaged for sure. Thanks, Shannon, for having yeah, me. Yeah, thank you.